Hey everyone, it's Christian, the P4 on my academic APPE for five weeks. Here's a walkthrough of common calculations found in the hospital setting and especially for FAR 535 for your competency review. Just a few things before we start with the calculations. Number one, here's a disclaimer. This review is not all inclusive of every topic that will be on the competency. Rather, it's supposed to be a review of common problems that students struggle with. Please refer to the documents posted on Blackboard for full information related to exam content, practice problems, and grading expectations. Secondly, here's a list of important conversions, important formulas, and percent strength relationships. We might not use all these in the, in the video or in the course, but these are important for the NAPLEX, for rotations, and for practice as a pharmacist. So I would memorize these. However, in the video, we're definitely going to use the conversion one kilogram is equivalent to 2.2 pounds. We're going to use these important formulas and we'll be converting percent strengths to workable concentration units. So definitely remember those for the competency at least. But for practice, NAPLEX, and other calculations and for rotations, try to keep these conversions in the back of your head. So we're going to cover in this review IV infusions, parenteral admixtures, and infusion rates, milliequivalents, millimoles, milliosmoles, and tonicity and allegations. And a few important concepts that'll hopefully get you through these calculations. Number one, for many problems, you're gonna st you can start by converting percent strength to workable concentration units, such as grams of API over 100 grams total, and the like. And if you're given several units, try canceling out units to give you the acquired units, which might include flipping around units. We'll go through practice with that in the calculations following this. So basically, most of the calculations problems you'll encounter here and in other calculations problems involve converting units and canceling out units to get you the required units. So basically, just think convert units and cancel units to get the required units. And that'll hopefully get you through most of these problems. So for the first set of problems, we're going to go over IV infusions, parenteral admixtures, and infusion rates. So the first problem, a physician orders 400 milligrams of dopamine and 250 milliliters D5W to be administered IV at a rate of 5 mics per kg per minute. The drip delivers 15 drops per milliliter. If the patient weighs 150 pounds, we're going to calculate the concentration and the flow rate. So first, the problem asks us to calculate the concentration in milligrams per milliliter. So we'll do that first. So first step, determine the mass of the AI active ingredient in the fluid bag. So the AI is dopamine. The mass is 400 milligrams. The volume, step two, the volume of the fluid bag is 250 milliliters of D5W. So now determine the concentration in milligrams per milliliter. We're gonna divide 400 milligrams divided by 250 milliliters. And that should give us 1.6 milligrams per milliliter. That's the concentration. So now the flow rate. So we know the rate given is in unit terms of mice per kg per minute. We know the patient weighs 150 pounds. So now we can remove the kilograms to get the patient specific flow rate from the generic flow rate in mice per kg per minute. So first, Step one, we're gonna determine or convert pounds to kilograms. So we know the patient weighs 150 pounds. We know there are 2.2 pounds and one kilogram. We set it that way so units cancel out the numerator pounds with the denominator pounds. So 150 divided by 2.2 gives you 68.18 kilograms. So step two, we're going to calculate the patient-specific flow rate from the generic flow rate, mice per kg per minute, and the patient's weight. So now we know the rate is 5 mics per kg per minute. So 5 micrograms per kilogram per minute. We know the patient weighs 68.18 kilograms. I said it that way, so you know it cancels out kilograms in the numerator and kilograms in the denominator. So 68.18 times 5 gives you 340.9 micrograms per minute. So step 3, we're going to calculate the final flow rate. 
and the required units of milliliters per hour from the concentration and the patient specific flow rate. So we have the concentration is 1.6 milligrams per milliliter. Concentrations 1.6 milligrams per milliliter. We know we have the flow rate in the patient specific flow rate in mics per minute. So we need to get it into milliliters per hour. And we know that the masses, milligrams and micrograms can cancel out. So how do we do that? Well, let's convert micrograms to milligrams first and minutes to hours. So 340.9 micrograms per minute. So let's convert micrograms to mil milligrams first. We know a thousand micrograms are in one milligram. So micrograms cancels out numerator and denominator to leave you with milligrams on top. It means to convert mil minutes to hours. So 60 minutes are in one hour. We set up that way so you just cancel it out minutes at the top with minutes on bottom. So leaving you with hours. So now we have 340.9 divided by 1,000 times 60, which gives us 20.454 uh, milligrams per hour. Now we know we want the units. The problem calls for units in milliliters per hour. So we need to get milliliters on top and hours on bottom. So we know hours is on bottom already, so that's good. We need to get concentration milliliters on top. So we can flip around the units. So two, four, 24 point, 20, sorry, 20.454 milligrams per hour flipping around the concentration so milliliters ends up on top 1.6 milligrams per milliliter so that's the concentration right here I just flipped it to get milliliters on top so I flipped that way so milligrams cancels numerator and denominator leaving with milliliters per hour so 20.454 divided by 1.6 gives you 12.8 milliliters per hour. Let me fix that. That's 12.8 milliliters per hour. So the next problem, in order for one dose of esmolol, 500 mics per kg over one minute was entered for a 130 pound patient presenting with an, with an aortic dissection. The pharmacy has esmolol 1% weight by volume in stock. What volume in milliliters do you need to remove from vial to give to the nurse for the patient? So first, since we know that the dose is in mics per kg, we know that the patient has a mass of 130 pounds. Let's take up the kilograms first. So converting my, uh, pounds to kilograms, 130 pounds equivalent to 2.2 pounds in one kilogram. Set up that way so units cancels out pounds in the numerator, pounds in the denominator. So 130 divided by 2.2 gives you 59.09 kilograms. So now we can cal calculate the patient's specific dose since we know the general dose is 500 mics per kg, we know the patient weighs 59.09 kilograms. I set up that way so units cancels out kilograms in the numerator, kilograms in the denominator. So 500 times 59.09 gives you 29545 micrograms. 
Step three, we're gonna convert percent weight by volume to get grams of API per 100 milliliter total. Since the conversion that showed you on top and the per strength, percent strength conversion, percent weight by volume is defined as grams of API per 100 milliliters total. So, step three, we know it comes as 1% weight by volume. So 1% weight by volume is one gram of API per 100 milliliter total. So now we know, step four, we're gonna calculate the volume of the API from the concentration and the mass, micrograms. I'm gonna set, up the rest, set it up as a ratio. So here, we know it's 1% is equivalent to one gram of API per 100 milliliter total. We now know we have 29545 micrograms. And how many milliliters do we need to get the volume? I set up that way in the ratio because grams remains on top for both and milliliters is on bottom for both. So stay consistent if you're setting your ratio. The same units should be on the same level. So grams is on top or mass is on top and milliliters or volume is on bottom. Now we know we should convert micrograms to grams since the unit is in grams here and they're not equal. So we know 29545 micrograms is equivalent to one, two, three, four, five, six. Those are commas, not decimals. That can be a failure. Uh, we know one gram is equivalent to one million micrograms. So, two, nine, five, four, five, divided by a million. I set it up that way, so units cancels out micrograms on top with micrograms on bottom to give you two, oh, 0 0.029545 grams. So now I can work with the ratio down here. So one gram of API per 100 milliliter total. I know we have two, 0 0.029545 grams, and how many milliliters do we need? Solving for X gives you 2.95 milliliters of esmolol needed. Third problem, a hospital pharmacist receives the following order. Now still in sodium, 800 milligrams and 100 milliliter normal saline. The pharmacist uses a 100 gram vial of with the following directions on the label. When reconstituted with 3.4 milliliters of diluent, each vial contains four milliliter solution. However, he reconstitutes the vial with five milliliters of sterile water instead of 3.4 milliliters as directed on the label. So we're gonna calculate the volume of the solution that should be added to 100 milliliters of normal saline for the required dose. So basically we're gonna calculate the new volume required for this dose of 800 milligrams. So visually, this problem looks like, um, so here is your one gram vial of nacillin. And here's a powder sitting in the bottom to be reconstituted. I'll put it in a different color. So here's a powder at the bottom to be reconstituted. Then the label says, the correct label says, when we reconstitute it with 3.4 milliliters of diluent, so we're gonna add 3.4 from this vial of, it looks like sterile water, 3.4 milliliters. Uh, it's gonna contain four, four milliliters. So how did you get four milliliters from 3.4 milliliters? Question mark. So we know 3.4 milliliters was filled. This would be 3.4 milliliters of sterile water. So how do we get four milliliters from 3.4? Well, you have to count for a powder volume. 
So how much was this powder volume to get the four milliliters? So basically the 3.4 milliliters plus the powder volume milliliters plus the powder volume gave us a total of four milliliters. So to solve for the powder volume equals 3.4 milliliters plus X. We'll do X as the powder volume. So X would be 0 0.6 milliliters. And that's important because if you reconstitute with a new, vo new volume of sterile water, which was the five milliliters instead of the 3.4 milliliters, what is the new volume? So new volume with five milliliters. Well, we know the powder volume is 0 0.6 milliliters. We know we're adding five milliliters. So five milliliters plus the powder volume of 0 0.6 milliliters. That would give us the new volume of 5.6 milliliters total. I'm basically going through steps in visual form. Um, I'm basically going through all these steps as I listed here, but just visually. So now we know there is, now we know this one gram vial of napsilin has 5.6 milliliters. So one gram so one gram of napsilin, napsilin in five point six milliliters is a new concentration. So basically, we're on step four, step three, determine the new concentration of the reconstituted one gram vial of napsilin. So that's the new concentration. So step four, calculate the volume required to be drawn from the vial based on the new concentration, which is one gram per 5.6 milliliters and the required mass of napsilin. So we know we need five, 800 milligrams is the required math, mass of napsilin. So let's set up a ratio again. We know we need 800 milligrams of napsilin. So what's the new volume in milliliters? So let's set up that way again. So the ratios line up mass is on top, grams and milligrams, and volume is on bottom, milliliters and milliliters. So let's convert milligrams to grams, so e units are equal, and we know that 800 milligrams is equivalent to one, uh, point z 0 0.8 grams. So one gram of naphthalene is 5.6 milliliters, zero, equals 0 0.8 sorry, grams of napsilin and x milliliters. Solve your x. So 0 0.8 times 5.6 gives us 4.48 milliliters needed. So we need 4.48 milliliters to get us that 800 milligrams. <coughs> so the next problem at 0800 hours, we get an order in the hospital pharmacy with instructions to increase the flow rate on a patient's IV fluid to 50 milliliters per hour. When you check this patient's profile, you find that he's receiving 500, milliliter, 500 milliliters normal saline, saline at 30 milliliters per hour and that the last bag was started at 0530 hours. What time should the next bag of normal saline be started, assuming that the nurse changed the IV rate on the existing bag at exactly 0800 when the order came in? So like the last problem, I'll go through this um, visually mostly. So we have a bag in IV fluid bag. And here's the fluid inside it. So we know that the infusion started at 0530. The infusion started at 0530. And we know that the rate, and we know that at 0800, 
the uh, order changed in terms of flow rate. So now we know the original flow rate, he was receiving 30 mils per hour. So here it was 30 mils per hour. I should note that this volume is um, normal saline 500 milliliters. So this is a 500 milliliter bag of normal saline. So what time, and we know that the new flow rate at 0800 is 50 milliliters per hour to completion of the bag. Because we, we, we have to know what time this bag is going to finish. Because the problem is asking, what time should the next bag of normal saline be started? Implying that we're going to finish the bag and then start a new bag right after. So, to do that, we're going to determine how much fluid was already run was already infused at this time when between 0530 and 0800 with a rate of 30 mils per hour so we need to go between 0530 to 0800 that's 2.5 hours and we know the original flow rate was 30 milliliters per hour so multiplying by 2.5 hours at 30 milliliters per hour can give us how many milliliters was used in two and a half hours or infused in two and a half hours. I set up that way so you can just cancel it out hours in the numerator, hours in, hours in the denominator. So 30 times 2.5 gives us 75 milliliters used. So this is 75 milliliters, this whole chunk right here. So what's the remaining volume here? Well, we know if this is 75 milliliters and the whole bag is, or the whole volume is 500 milliliters, then that should give us this remaining volume. So 500 milliliters minus 75 milliliters gives us 425 milliliters remaining. So we know that this now is 425 milliliters. So how many hours will this 425 milliliters last at the new flow rate of 50 mils per hour? So at 50 mils per hour, we're working with 425 milliliters. So how many hours is left? So we're gonna flip around the units again so you know it's gonna cancel out. So we know we want hours on top, so 50 milliliters hours on top. And it's multiplied by 425 milliliters to cancel out the milliliters. So milliliters cancel on top cancels out with milliliters on bottom. So 425 divided by, by, divided by 50 gives you 8.5 hours. So at 8.5 hours from 0800, which is equivalent to 1630 hours. So basically for 30. PM. So at 16.30 hours or 4.30 PM, the bag needs to be changed. So now we're gonna work with milliequivalents, milliosmoles, and tonicity. So a few problems related to that. So Ringer's injection solution contains 0.86% sodium chloride, 0.03% potassium chloride, and 0.033% calcium chloride dihydrate. Listed are the molecular weights of important components. Then we're going to calculate the potassium content in milliequivalents per milliliter. Per liter. So we know the formula. I'm going to scroll. Sorry for the scrolling. We know the formula for milliequivalents. 
Also take note of the other formula so I don't have to keep scrolling. Um, is mill equivalence is milligrams per molecular weight times valence, which is actually really similar if you want to memorize, if you need to memorize milliosmol to milliosmol, except that the difference is mill equivalence is valence and milliosmol is number of species produced. So mill equivalence has milligrams per mil divided by molecular weight, and so does milliosm milliosmol, which has milligrams per molecular weight. The only difference is that milliequivalence has multiplied by valence, and milliosmol is number of species produced. So that's a big difference, and that's a good way to memorize it. So, we know that the equ equation for milliequivalence is milligrams per molecular weight times the valence, which is the charge. So, step one, we're going to convert percent weight by volume of API. As I said, an important concept, we're going to convert percent strength to workable concentration units. So you know, potassium chloride is what the question is asking for. It comes in 0.03%. So 0.03% weight by volume is 0 0.03 grams per 100 milliliters. We know the final unit should be milliequivalents per liter. So let's convert milliliters to liters first. So we know a thousand milliliters is equivalent to one liter. I set it up that way so units cancels out numerator of milliliters with numerator and denominator of milliliters or denominator of milliliters to give us liters as the resulting solution or a resulting unit. So now the concentration is 0 0.03 divided by a hundred times a thousand to give us 0 0.3 grams per liter. We know that the units of milliequivalents involves milligrams, but here we have grams, so let's convert grams to milligrams. So we know one gram has a thousand milligrams. Set up that way so you get cancels out grams in the bottom with grams on top to leave us with milligrams. Leave us with milligrams. So 0.3 times a thousand gives us 300 milligrams per liter. So now we need to go up from 300 grams per liter to milliequivalents, which is milligrams per molecular weight times of valence. So just isolating the 300 since we already have the liters so that's good and the problem requires it in liters so that's good. So milliequivalence is 300 milligrams divided by the molecular weight which is 39 plus 35.5, because potassium chloride comes as KCl. So that's your K, which is 39, your Cl chloride, which is 35.5. So adding those, 39 plus 35.5 gives you 74.5 is a molecular weight. times of valence. The valence, so the charge on potassium is one plus, chloride is one minus, so the valence is, valence is one. So you can multiply that by one. So, so milliequivalence is 300 by 74.5, to give us 4.03 milliequivalents. 
and we're dividing by liters, so 4.03 milliequivalents per liters. So basically, we just isolated the milligrams since we already had liters. So we can just isolate that. So 300 milligrams transfers over to the formula of milliequivalents. So 300 is a milligrams divided by the molecular mass times the valence, which is one. So that gave us 4.03 milliequivalents, milliequivalents, but dividing again by the liters, since we were originally divided by liters, to get liters, to get 4.03 milliequivalents per liter, which is the required unit over here, milliequivalents per liter. Next problem. As the emergency medicine pharmacist, you and the attending physician agreed to order one liter of D5 half normal saline containing 20 milliequivalents potassium for a patient presenting with DKA, diabetic, diabetic ketoacidosis. The IV room pharmacist notifies you that the hospital supply of D5 half normal saline, one liter bags, was depleted over the weekend, so the IV room only has D5W one liter bags. What volumes of additives must be injected to make the required solution, which is D5 half normal saline with 20K potassium? The molecular weights are shown here. Based on the 10% rule, after you add the ad after you can calculate the amount of additives, what should the volume be removed from the base fluid bag, which is D5W, before injecting the additives? Additives. The products are listed below. So to determine that, we need to, step one, determine the additives that are required to be injected to fulfill the order. So we know the order calls for D5 half normal saline. However, we only in supply have D5W, we have normal saline and potassium chloride. So the difference here is that we're missing the normal saline. Oh, the order also calls for 20 equivalents of potassium. So we definitely need our missing from supply of D5W bag. We're missing the normal saline and we're missing potassium. So we need to inject normal saline or sodium chloride at least. So I'll erase that so it's more accurate. Um, we're missing sodium chloride to get the normal saline. So we need to inject sodium chloride and potassium chloride to get the D5 half normal saline with 20 of K from the D5W. So D5W is your is your primary solution, your starting solution. Then, then we need to add sodium chloride to get the half normal saline and the potassium chloride to get the 20 of K. So step two. Since the products are supplied in milliequivalents per liter, convert units as necessary from mass to milliequivalents. So we're going to convert, as I said earlier, try to convert percent strengths to workable concentration units. So we know we're missing half, we need half normal saline. So we know half normal saline is equivalent to 0 0.45 grams of sodium chloride per 100 milliliters of solution. Since normal saline is equivalent to 0.45% of sodium chloride. Half normal is, and normal saline, which is 0.9% sodium chloride. So basically half normal is literally one half of normal saline, which is half of 0.9% to give you 0.5, 0 0.45% which is half normal saline. That's why they call it half normal saline. Because it's literally half of normal. Um, so half normal saline is 0.45 grams of NaCl per 100 milliliters. We know that the bag is, we know we're gonna work with the 1000 milliliter bag. 
since the order is for one liter. So, you know, 0.45 grams NaCl per 100 milliliters. You know, we're working with one liter. How many grams is that? Because we're going to convert grams to micro, micro milli equivalents, like I said. So, converting grams or liters to milliliters, we know a thousand milliliters is equivalent to one liter. So, I converted one liter to a thousand milliliters. Solving for x, so 0.45 times a thousand. Divide 100 gives you 4.5 grams of NaCl. So what is that in milliequivalents? Since sodium chloride is injection is supplied in milliequivalents per liter, we need to go from grams to milliequivalents. So we know the formula for milliequivalents was milligrams per molecular weight times the valence. We know the 4.5 grams NaCl is equivalent to 4,500 milligrams. That works out, or that is because 4.5 grams or one gram is equivalent to 1,000 milligrams. Units cancels out numerator grams, denominator grams, maybe the milligrams, which is 4,500 milligrams. So 4,500 milligrams divided by molecular weight of normal or sodium chloride. So sodium chloride is NaCl. So Na is 23 and Cl is 35.5. So 23 plus 35.5 gives you 58.5. 58.5. The valence, so NaCl, Na has a charge of 1, Cl has a charge of 1 minus, so that's valence is 1. So 4500 divided by 58.5 58 gives us mill equivalence of NaCl for normal saline is 77 mill equivalents. We know it's supplied as a two and a half mill equivalent per milliliter vial. So we know it's 2.5 mill equivalents per milliliter vial. We're working with 77 mill equivalents, setting up the ratio. Mill equivalents on top and milliliters on bottom. So solving for x, 77 by two, divided by 2.5, x equals 30.8 milliliters normal, or not normal saline, but NaCl. We know the order also calls for 20 potassium, 20 milliequivalents of potassium. The units are already in milliequivalents, two milliequivalents per milliliter, so let's talk for the milliliters. So for K, we don't need to convert to milliequivalents because it's already milliequivalents. So 20 milliliter, 20 milliequivalents of potassium is how many milliliters? The concentration was two per milliliter. Solving for X gives us 10 milliliters of potassium. It's a chloride. Yes, it's chloride. So 20 mil 10 milliliters of potassium chloride to give us 20 mil equivalents. So is this total volume of additives less than or greater than 10% of the base fluid volume? So basically, do we need to remove fluid from the base fluid before injecting the additives, or can we just inject the additives? Well, the 10% rule says that if the total volume of additives exceeds the 10% of the base fluid volume, then you 
do need to remove additives if it does exceed the 10%. However, if the total volume additive does not exceed the 10% of the base fluid, then you don't need to remove the additives. So the base fluid is D5W 1 liter. So 1 liter is the total volume. Sorry. So 10% of 1 liter gives you 10% of 1,000 milliliters, which is equivalent to 100 milliliters. So the total volume of additives, as we said, is 30.8 milliliters of sodium chloride and 10 milliliters of potassium chloride to give us a total volume of 40.8 milliliters of additives, which is less than 100 milliliters, which is 10% of the base fluid, D5W1 liter, Therefore, we do not need to remove base fluid before adding the additives. However, for example, for example, if the total volume additives was 200 milliliters, then it, and the same base fluid is being used, D5W1 liter, then 200 milliliters would exceed the 100 milliliters, which is 10% of a 1 liter. Therefore, you would re need to remove 200 milliliters from the base fluid before adding the additives. So take out 200 milliliters from the base fluid and then add the 200 milliliters of additives. But in this case, since the total volume was 40.8 milliliters of additives, which is less than 10% of the milliliter of D5W, so less than 100 milliliters, then we do not need to remove base fluid. So next, uh, in terms of tonicity, what volume of each, each of purified water and a normal saline solution should be used to prepare 30 milliliters of a 1% weight by volume isotopic solution of fentanyl citrate? Uh, e value is 0.11. So, for basically for E value problems or tonicity problems, I like t a visual way of representing these problems is like a line. So here, here's like the tonicity line, which is basically uh, 0.9% normal saline and the equivalent. So here's a drug which is not equivalent to normal saline. So how do we get it equivalent? So we multiply it by the E value. I'll draw that line over here. Multiply by the E value so that now it's equivalent to normal saline. So basically the E value converts a drug from its basic form, from its basic form, or I'll use this, the pointer, from its basic form, so that multiplying by the E value makes it equivalent to normal saline. So when you figure out how much normal saline is required by a solution, Let's say you figure out how much normal saline is required by solution. And you know how much is contributed by the drug, which is the drug, grams of drug multiplied by the E value. Then you get how much is remaining or needs to be added. So to illustrate this is this problem. So step one, we're going to convert percent weight by volume as always to workable concentration unit for both the active ingredient and normal saline. So we know we're working with an isotonic solution. So we need normal saline. So we need normal saline, which is 0.9% weight by volume. We know we're working with 1% of the fentanyl. Um, so 
fentanyl would be 1% weight by volume, which is 1 gram per 100 milliliter total. We know normal saline isotonic is 0.9%, which is 0 0.9 grams per 100 milliliter total. However, for a 30 milliliter solution of that, how many grams is it? So we know for fentanyl, one gram, 100 milliliters, set up a ratio, we know the solution is 30 milliliters, put X on top, so grams matches with grams, milliliters matches with milliliters, so one times 30 divided by 100 gives us 0 0.3 grams of fentanyl in a 30 milliliter solution. How much saline is that? We know 20 grams for 100 milliliters. We know we have a 30 milliliter solution. Milliliters on bottom, grams is on top. Solving for X, so 0 0.9 times 30 divided by 100 is 0 0.27 grams of saline required. So now drawing the line, we know we need a total of 0 0.27 grams total required. We know we have 0 0.3 grams of fentanyl. So how do we get it to make it equivalent to sodium chloride? Multiply by the E value. So we know the E value is 0 0.11. So 0 0.3 times 0 0.11 gives us 0 0.033 grams of fentanyl equivalent with sodium chloride. So now we know that this equi is equivalent to 0 0.033 grams. So how much sodium chloride do we need to remaining to make this solution totally isotonic to fulfill the 0 0.27 grams so currently it's hypotonic since we only have currently 0 0.033 grams 0 0.033 grams how much do we need to add to make this up to the 0.27 grams of normal saline of sodium chloride so now we can subtract, because previously we couldn't subtract uh, point, we couldn't, sub, we cannot subtract 0 0.3 with 0 0.27, because that's like subtracting apples and oranges. Here's your apple, 0 0.27 grams, and here's your orange, 0 0.3 grams. However, now that we made oranges into apples, so 0 0.3 grams was converted to sodium chloride equivalents, now we can subtract apples with apples. Or, or, yeah, apples with apples. I think that's what I said. Um, because previously we, can't, we couldn't subtract apples with oranges, but now we made oranges with apples, so now we can subtract apples with apples. So how much is this right here? Well, now we can subtract 0.27 with 0 0.033 to give us how much this is in terms of sodium chloride. So 0 0.27 grams minus... 0 0.033 grams 27 minus 0 0.033 grams gives us 0 0.237 grams of sodium chloride so I basically went through the steps visually again so we converted percent weight by volume to workable concentration units then we determined the mass required of fentanyl and their total required mass of sodium chloride. Now we're going to calculate the volume of sodium chloride remaining. 
So we calculated the e, we used the e value to calculate how much fentanyl was equivalent to sodium chloride. Then we calculated the remaining mass by subtracting 0.27, which is the total required mass of sodium chloride, by 0.033, which is the mass of equivalent fentanyl to sodium chloride. Now we can use a concentration of normal saline to figure out step C, the volume of sodium chloride remaining. So we know, we know this right here is sodium chloride. We know we're missing 0.237 grams of sodium chloride. So from a normal saline solution, nine grams or 100 milliliters, We know we have 0.237 grams. How many milliliters is that? Sign for x. Seven times 100 is 26.3 milliliters of sodium chloride. So now we solve for the solve for the volume of normal saline solution. How much purified water do we need? Well, we know the solution is 30 milliliters. We know we already have 26.3 milliliters. So 30 milliliters minus 26.3 milliliters gives us three, Three point seven milliliters of purified water needed. <laughs> so basically, once we once we found how much, once we found how much fentanyl was equivalent to sodium chloride, and we found the total amount of sodium chloride needed based on normal saline concentration. We found the amount of sodium chloride remaining in grams. Now we can use the concentration of normal saline to figure out how many milliliters this is. So how many, how many milliliters is this, which we did, which was 26.3. Then we know the total volume is 30, so 30 minus 26.3 which gives us 3.7 milliliters of water. So then we solve for milliliters of purified water, purified water, and a normal saline solution. <coughs> so bromodidine is used as a point, next problem, bromodidine is used as a 0.1% ophthalmic solution in the treatment of glaucoma. We're going to determine whether a 10 milliliter container of this product is hypotonic, isotonic, or hypertonic. Um, so again, we're going to need to make apples, oranges to apples, so we can compare apples to apples. Um, so again, step one, we're going to convert percent weight by volume for both the active ingredient and normal saline. So here's the line again. Um, we know bromodidine is supplied as a 0.1% product, so 0.1 grams per 100 milliliter total. And to compare tonicity, we're going to make, we're going to start with normal saline as a reference standard. So 0.9% normal saline is equivalent to 0.9 grams per 100 milliliter total. That's our reference. Determine if the solution is hypotonic, hypertonic, or isotonic. We know the volume, again, is 10 milliliters. We're going to step two. Calculate the mass based on the volume and the concentration. So we know the volume is 10 milliliters. So bromodidine, 0.1 grams, 100 milliliters. We know we have 10 milliliters. Solve for x. So 0.1 times 10 divided by 100, x equals, zero, x equals 0 0.01 grams of bromodidine. How much sodium chloride would be contained, or normal saline would be contained in 10 milliliters? 
So 0.9 grams per 100 milliliters. We know we have 10 milliliters. X is on top. Solve for X. Solve for X. Gives you 0 0.09 grams of saline in. No, uh, yeah, normal sodium chloride in 10 milliliters of the solution. So visually, we have 0 0.09 grams NaCl. We know we already have 0 0.01 grams of bromododine. So how do you compare apples to oranges? Well, we need to make oranges to apples again. So how do we do that? We can we convert by the E value. So multiplying 0 0.01 times the E value, the A E value is 0.13. So 0 0.01 grams per motorine times 0 0.13. gives us 0 0.0013 grams of bromonidine equivalent with sodium chloride. So 0 0.0013 grams of bromonidine equivalent and we have 0 0.09 grams NaCl. Is it hypotonic, isotonic, or hypertonic? Well, over here, it would be hypotonic since the grams of AI equivalent, bromodine equivalent, is less than sodium chloride. So 0 0.0013 is less than sodium chloride, therefore it's hypotonic. So next, an IV fluid bag was incorrectly made and achieved an osmolarity of 490 milliosmoles per liter. What volume of purified water is needed to dilute one liter of solution through the desired osmolarity of 280? So here, if we're using dilutions, a main concept we're going to use, or a main formula, if you ever see dilutions, dilute, is basically think C1V1 equals C2V2, where C1 is the concentration of product 1, V1 is the total volume or mass of product one. C2 is a concentration of product two, and V2 is the total mass or volume of product number two, or the new volume. So basically C1 would be, concentration is incorrectly made one, which is 490 milliosmol per liter. The volume is one liter, since we're starting out with diluting one liter of the solution, equals, we want to get 280 as desired osmolarity, 280 mil osmol per liter, and we don't know V2. So solving for V2, 490 divided by 280 gives us 1.75 liters. Units cancels out, mil osmol to leave us liters to give us V2. However, I said that V2 is the total volume of product 2, which includes the volume of product 1, since we're diluting it. So basically, we're going from 1 liter, we're going to add more water to give us a volume of 1.75, which already contains this 1 liter here. So now we need to figure out how much this is. So we know this whole thing is 1.75. We know this is one liter in here. How much is this? So 1.75 liters minus a liter would give us 0.75 liters. 
which is equivalent to 750 milliliters. That works out because 175 liters, one liter, liters cancels out. Well, one liter is equivalent to 1,000 milliliters, liters cancels out top and bottom, so liters on top and liters on bottom to leave you the milliliters. 0.75 times 1,000 is 750 milliliters. That's how much water we need to add to make it an osmolarity of 280. So the last osmolarity problem before we get to allegations, what's the osmolarity solution with D5W and half normal saline? Additionally, it is a solution hypoosmotic, isosmotic, or hyperosmotic to serum. So as I said earlier, the um, formula for osmolarity is milligrams over molecular weight, but not unlike milliequivalents, it's not multiplied by, by valence, it's multiplied by the number of species. So we know first to convert percent strength to workable concentration units. So uh, we have D5W and normal saline, or half normal saline. So D5W is given as 5% dextrose in water, which is equivalent to 5 grams over 100 milliliters. Normal saline, as I said earlier, is 0.45%, which is given as 0.45 grams per 100 milliliters. And we want to keep the milliliters because the concentration, the units required is in milliosmoles per liter. So let's convert milliliters to liters since we want liters eventually. So 5 grams per 100 milliliters, this is D5W. We know there are a thousand milliliters in one liter. So five times a thousand divided by hundred gives you fifty grams. So units cancels out milliliters on top and milliliters on bottom per liter. With normal saline, that would give point forty five grams per hundred milliliter total. Multiplying by a thousand milliliter so would give us four point five grams per liter. So now we can convert that to milliosmoles. But we know that milliosmoles needs it in milligrams. So let's convert to milligrams now. So for D5W, we know one gram has a thousand milligrams. Sorry. Grams cancels out top and bottom. So 50 times a thousand gives us. 50,000 milligrams per liter. And for normal saline, multiply by 1,000. Grams cancels out. New random denominator give us 4,500 milligrams per liter. So now we have milligrams. Milliosmoles is required to be in milligrams. We can calculate milliosmoles now. So for D5W, it's in 50,000 milligrams per liter. Divided by the molecular weight, D5W is molecular weight of dextrose is 180. 
So divide by 180 times the number of species. So dextrose has one species because it does, a, does not dissolve in solution, it's just a sugar molecule. So 50,000 divided by 180 gives us 277.7. The odds moles per liter. For normal saline, we know it's 4,500 milligrams per liter. For half normal saline, we know it's 4,500 milligrams per liter. I'll make that accurate too. Um, so it's Uh, divided by so 45 milligrams divided by molecular weight molecular weight of sodium chloride is uh, sodium is 23 chloride is 35.5 so sorry for the scroll so 23 plus 35.5 gives you 58.5 times the number of species so NaCl in solution dissolves into sodium ions and chloride ions, which is two species. So two, multiply by two, so 450 divided by 58.5 times two, or 4500 divided by 58.5 times two gives us 153.85. Os moles per per liter. So the total osmolarity is two seventy seven point seventy eight plus one fifty three point eight five gives us four thirty one point sixty three osmol per liter. So that's the osmolarity of the solution. So now we can determine if it's hypoosmotic, isosmotic, or hyperosmotic. Well, you know the serum is serum is three hundred, and we know this is greater than three hundred. The os moles per liter, therefore it's hypertonic. Actually not hypertonic, it's hyperosmotic, I said that wrong. So 431.63 milliosmoles per liter is greater than 300 milliosmoles per liter, therefore it's hyper osmotic, not hypertonic, but hyperosmotic. So allegations, here's something I got from the Netflix book, the Netflix review book. An easy way to remember how to set up allegations is high goes high, low goes low, goes low desired in the middle, subtract diagonally to get the number of parts, label horizontally, and add up the total number of parts as needed. We can also use the allegation al algebraic method, which is C1V1 plus C2V2 equals C3 times V1 plus V2, where C1 is the percent strength of product 1, V1 is the volume or mass of product 1, C2 is the percent strength of volume of product 2, V2 is the percent volume or mass of product 2, C3 is the desired product strength, and so now I'm going to illustrate both methods in the following allegation problems. Um, so a pharmacist is asked to prepare 80 grams of a 12.5% ectomol ointment with 16% and 12% ectomol ointments in stock. How many grams of 16% and 12% ointments are required? So as I said earlier, we would use the, uh, the diagram method. So high goes high, 16%. Low goes low, 12% is a lower product. Desired in the middle, we want 12.5%. Subtract diagonally. So 16 minus 12 and a half gives us three and a half parts. 
12 minus 12.5% is 0 0.5 percent. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's 0 0.5 parts. Subtract diagonals give you parts. Label horizontally, so horizontally would be 0.5 parts of 16%, and horizontally 3.5 parts of 12%. We're going to add the number, total number of parts. So 3.5 plus 0.5 gives us 4 parts total. So we need to figure out how many grams of each ointment are required. So we know the total mass is 80 grams, 80 grams, total parts is four parts. You know, one of the parts for 16% is 0.5 parts. And we need to figure out how many X grams that is. So basically the formula I use here, or the ratio I set up here is total mass divide total parts equals mass of one ingredient ingredient divided by parts of one ingredient. That's the formula I use, the ratio I use. So solving for x over here, 80 times 0.5 divided by 4 would give us 10 grams of 16 percent. So what about the 12 percent? Well we know again 80 grams whatever has four parts total. We know oops sorry we know 12 percent is represented by three and a half parts so three and a half parts of 12 percent how many grams is that? So 80 times 3.5 divided by 4 gives us 70 grams of 12%. That should work out because 70 grams plus 10 grams of 16% gives us 80 grams, which is what we need. So algebraic, the algebraic method is C1V1 plus C2V2 equals C3 plus V2. C1 is 16%. We don't know how many grams that is. V, we'll call that V1. Second one is 12%. We don't know how many grams that is. C3, you want it to be 12.5%. We know V1 plus V2 should be 80 grams total, so 80. And we know that V1 plus V2 gives us 80 grams, so V1 would be 80 minus V2. So we can substitute 16% 80 minus V2 plus 12% V2 equals times uh, 12 and a half percent of 80. So let's see. That would be equivalent to 12.5% of 80 would give us 10. And 16.5% of 80 would give us 12.8. 16% V2 plus 12% V2. We know solving for V2, V2 gives us 70. grams of, we know V2 was 12%, therefore 80 minus 70 grams would give us 10 grams, since V1 equals 80 minus V2, so 10 grams of 16%. So you get the same answer, it's just whatever way you want to do it. Next problem, last problem in this review. 
How much 2.5% hydrocortisone cream should be mixed with 360 grams of base to make a 1% hydrocortisone cream? So, allegation alternative method, diagram method. We know high goes high, which is 2.5%. Low goes low. So base, very important, is equivalent to 0%. So base is equivalent to 0%. So low goes low. Desire in the middle, which is 1%. Subtract diagonally. 2.5 minus 1% is 1.5 parts. 0 minus 1 is 1 part. Label horizontally. So 1 part of 2.5% and 1.5 parts of 0% or base. We can do the total number of parts, which is two and a half parts. So if we do the original ratio, which is total mass, total part, equals mass of one ingredient divided by part of one ingredient. We would have two unknowns because we don't we know the total number of parts is two and a half. We know the part of one ingredient, for example, of paste is one and a half parts, but we don't know the mass of the ingredient. We don't know the total mass. So let's set up the ratio of parts to each other. So part uh, mass of one divided by part of one equals mass of two divided by part of two. So that's another ratio you could use. So we know the mass of base, which is 0%, is 360 grams. 360 grams. We know the base is one and a half parts, 1.5 parts. We know the other part, ingredient has a one part, has one part. Solving for x to get through the mass of that part. So 360 divided by one and a half, x equals 240 grams. The algebraic way, C1, V1 plus C2, V2 equals C3 times V1 plus V2. V1 is 2.5%. V1, don't know that. C2 is 0% times 360 grams of that. We want to get a 1% ointment. We know V1 plus V2. So 2.5% V1 equals 1%. And we can convert this because we know V2 is 360. V1 plus 360. So 2.5% V1 equals 1% V1 plus 1% 360. You can consider the percents canceled. So 1.5 V1 equals 360. And V1 equals, again, 240 grams. So to illustrate, or just to go over the major concepts again, I'll just stay here. Uh, basically, most of, the most of these problems are basically conversions and canceling out units. Make sure you memorize the formulas, milliequivalents and milliosmoles, which are different in terms of spe number of species and valence. And number three, a third and most important concept is when in doubt, you can just convert percent strengths and work from there to comp workable concentration units and work from there. Hope this video, hope I hope this video is helpful and good luck with calculations competencies and good luck with calculations in the future.